Hi, I'm Stu McKamey of the USDA Systematic Entomology Lab, and in this presentation we're going to go over selected species of cichadelity. We're, we'll look at some common neotropical species that also occur in the USA that you're likely to come across, and some species of concern that include important vectors of grape and citrus, and then we'll key one species of Agalliani to give you an example of, of what these keys are like. So the first is Hortensia similis. This is a sharpshooter, and it's the most common cicadoline in the Neotropics. It's widespread and occurs in the USA. It's variable in size and the base color some, but it's usually this bright green that you see on the top, and the color is never lost in, in death. Um, the head black pattern, though, is almost invariable here and it always has this closed cell that you can see in front, there and here. The next slide is Protolabrella brasiliensis, another common neotropical species that occurs in the USA. The black pattern on the wings is essentially invariable and not lost. This clear area starts out yellow and fades over time in ethanol, and that's in contrast to this other uh, intercepted empoacine that came in from Mexico on, on basil, when it was fresh, it looked like this. And, and here's a side view. After one week in ethanol, though, it lost almost all the coloring, including the black on the wings. Now we'll look at three very similar species in Homoloidisca. Uh, Vitropenis, which is the glassy winged sharpshooter and a vector of Pearson disease in California, and and uh, southeastern U.S. And it's almost indistinguishable externally from ichthyocephala, but uh, if, we look, if you look at the Ediagus, these two bo uh, posterior processes are both ventral, and in ichthyocephala there's one dorsal and one ventral pair. So they're very, dis uh, very distinct in the genitalia, but almost indistinguishable externally. And then Lucernaria is a northern South America species that uh, was recently intercepted from Mexico. We don't know if that's where it started, but it's definitely a species of concern because uh, it's a vector of citrus chlorosis and oranges in Brazil. And it also has very distinct genitalia. It has a dorsal process, a pair of dorsal processes, and the ventral process, you can see by the clear area here, is articulated with the rest of the Ediagus. This is an overview of cicadelid morphology that you might run across in a key. Different cells have, uh, in, the, in the wings, have certain names that are used. Sometimes, because you're working with older keys and newer keys, you'll see a different terminology for the same structure, such as here the head, the top of the head is crown. Nowadays it's more commonly called the vertex. The plates of the male are often called uh, subgenital plates because they're below the genitalia. And there are a few things I want to point out here. Uh, first, the way to distinguish a female is these large uh, ovipositors that takes up a lot of the abdomen. And then in the male, it just sort of tapers off smaller and smaller, and then it usually has these triangular plates below. And the genitalia is very important, in, especially in the males. There's some females that have useful genitalia, but, but uh, most of cicadelid species taxonomy is based on the genitalia. Posterior views, dorsal views with the, with the uh, paramere or style, it's called, and uh, side views. These are all important views to, to be able to see when you're identifying a species. So now we're going to key out one species of Agalliani to give you an example of, of what kinds of things you have to look for. First thing you have to do is identify the genus. And for this, uh, you, the best source is Kramer 1964, uh, where he there's a key to all genera in the New World. And the first couplet is crown never strongly produced anteriorly, always much shorter than pronotum. Uh, I haven't shown the opposite side of the couplet because it's for an oddball that has never been intercepted. And uh, same thing with two. The other, the other one is just a very odd, odd thing that, that you'll never see. 
So in two, it's a celly not visible in dorsal view of crown and the forewing without many extra cross veins. So these, again, this ocelli are on the face, so you cannot see them in dorsal view. And the third couplet is distance between the ocelli and the ocellus in the eye uh, is greater. This is greater than that. And this is a common thing you'll see in lots of leaf hoppers. A common character is comparing how close they are to each other versus the compound eye. So this takes us to four. Couplet four is posterior margin, sinuately curved laterally and, and crowned distinctly extended laterally behind each eye, as in a galeopsis. And here you see, you can see part of the head behind the eye. And in uh, the opposite part of the couplet, it evenly curves behind the eye. And that takes us to six. In couplet six is surface of pronotum distinctly coarsely pitted, punctured, or transversely rugulose. This is pitted as in a galliana. Or basically smooth. Neither of those things. And that takes us to 11. 11 is style uh, of male genitalia forked distally which is self-explanatory and the case in the species we're looking at, and that takes us to 12. And uh, 12 is a pronotum in lateral view, not humped, crown of, so it can, increases, but it's not humped, crown of the uniform form length or nearly so in dorsal view, and the coloration usually drab, not red or black. And that takes us to the genus Egalia. Now we identify the species, and this is modified from moment 1933, uh, the key to North American Egalian leafhoppers. First couplet, not black and yellow, male plates not slender, uh, takes us to four. Elytra uh, not reticulately veined, here just a few veins here, so it's not reticulate, that takes us to five. Couplet five, with large oval black spots on the above uh, on the pronotum and on the pronotum and the head, or not as above, <laughs> and that takes us to 26. Uh, basically, black or almost so, or not, is in our species. That takes us to 36. 36 having a pair of rounder black fuscous spots uh, above the above the ocelli, 37. Pronotal markings consisting of a broad median line and one or more rather large spots on each side of this, although sometimes these marks are not very dark. Uh, and the opposite is with uh, spots only, and sometimes, though they're sometimes fused, and a very narrow line or no line medially. And our, our species looks like this. So that takes us to couplet 38. 38, uh, they separated males from females here. Um, males is what we're working with. And the plates are elongate, distinctly longer than base, basal width. So here's the width, and here's the length, and you can see it's longer than the basal width. Is That's the species configurata, or about essentially triangular, about as wide, as long, as in our, the species we're looking at, that takes us to 40. And in 40, EDA is short and stout. It's this structure here, seen through the pigifer, the last uh, segment that holds the genitalia, in albigula, or very long and slender. It's this structure there, and that's what we see in our specimen. Very long, slender, tip without processes, lingula. And in this, this is one of the species where the female can also be identified externally. On the seventh, a common uh, key, a common feature in many keys that include females is looking at the contour of the posterior margin of this seventh sternum. And in uh, some species, including this one, there's this little uh, ligulate process. And that's all. This is my list of collaborators, and that's all. Are there any questions? What is the difference between regular CD and covered CD? 
in membracidae? Well, in membracity and cicadelity, uh, there are hair-like CD, but there are also larger CD that have covered bases. It's all it looks almost like knuckles. They're they're black, um, black, short, and not sharp CD. A row of them are going around the one half of the C, of the base of the CETA, CETA, and those are the ones we count. Okay. I have a couple of questions about terminology. What's the difference between a, the crown and the vertex, and then um, plates and subgenital plates? That's a good question because oftentimes when you identify things, you have to use keys from different generations. And terminology, like any language, changes over time. And in the older publications, you'll see crown for the top of the head. And these days, we call it vertex. Also, you'll often see just the term plates, which are the subgenital plates now in the male genitalia.